Multiplayer card games, Hearthstone, Magic, Slay the Spire, Runeterra, what do they all have in common? I didn't make them. I did make this game though. It's called Coin Battle, because I'm really bad at naming things. I started working on this game for my capstone project at Arizona State. For anyone who doesn't know, a capstone project is something you have to do at the end of your four years studying at a university before you can graduate. It's supposed to demonstrate everything you learned over your past four years, so I really went all in on it. The basic idea of the game is that you have three coins and your opponent has three coins. Each one of these coins has six different abilities that you can choose from during the planning phase of each round. Once each player has finished their selections, they hit ready and then it goes into a battle phase where you can actually see the actions you've chosen being performed. There's a lot of nuanced stuff to it, but the basic idea is once the opponent's coins all get down to zero health, you win the game. And that's about all there is to the game, with the exception of the octopus dick. It's not supposed to be a dick, it's supposed to be a tentacle, but I prototyped this really fast, and you know, things turned out how they turned out, okay? Game dev is hard. <laughs> it's a penis! <laughs> There's also three element types that each coin can be assigned to. There's Frost, Storm, and Blaze. And keep in mind, this is not like rock, paper, scissors. One element doesn't do extra damage to another element. It's more like an identifier, so if I have a storm shield, it blocks incoming storm damage. If I have a frost dagger, it boosts outgoing frost damage. And there's also a physical component to the game. Me and my girlfriend have been talking about webkins nonstop recently, and I thought the world could use another cross-reality collectible. Cross-reality collectible? I don't think that's a real phrase, but I like it. You know, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Each one of these coins has a QR code on the back that can be scanned into this wishing well, and then it adds the coin to your account. So once you have a coin scanned into your account, you can use it in any future battles. All right, so now that you're all caught up with how the game works, it's time for the two minute tech talk where we talk about tech. So if you don't wanna be taught tech, skip two minutes. Let's start off with how the server works. The server is a modified instance of the game running on Amazon Web Services or AWS for short. The game's server authoritative, so no one can cheat, meaning all of the game logic is run on the server and then mirrored to the clients. Make sense? No? Okay. Here's a horrible oversimplification with some terrible art. Imagine two chess players. They can make a request to the main chess board, aka the server, and if it's a legal move, the main board will execute the move and update both players' chess boards. If it was an illegal move, the chess board will notice something was wrong and take care of it. Make sense now? Great. The way I chose to handle this was with dictionaries, my new C-sharp superpower. When paired with enums, it makes passing packets back and forth way simpler. When I create a new packet, I just add it to the server and client dictionaries and pass it further instructions here. For example, if I get a join game packet, run the join game function. Simple, right? Okay, enough server stuff for now. I handle the coins with scriptable objects, which for simplicity's sake is a glorified variable. It holds all of the coins information, such as its ID, sprite, abilities, and so on. I won't get into why this makes my life so much easier, but it does. Just trust me, okay? All right, stay with me. Each coin's abilities are created through the use of two indexes. There's a simple action index, which has common functions like take damage and change aura, and there's another complex action index, which is specific for each of the coin's abilities. For example, if I want my octopus to give everyone a storm shield, I'll use the complex index to call the function in the simple index multiple times. There's a lot more to the coins, but I'm on a timer here. Last thing is the user accounts. I stored all user information in an SQLite database because I have no idea how to do this properly. And yes, all of my passwords are hashed and salted like a good boy. Currently, matchmaking isn't an option due to the low player count, so I just added friends list and peer-to-peer -peer challenges. All right, so that's the main idea behind everything, but in two minutes, I can only talk about so much. I tried to crunch everything down into two minutes to try to not bore anyone, but if you want further tech explanations in the future, let me know in the comments. At this point, most of the infrastructure of the game has been completed, so future devlogs will mostly be about new coins, new abilities, and VFX. If you feel like you have a good idea for a coin, leave it in the comments below and I'll pick my favorite for the next coin battle devlog. Lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to each one of my Patreon supporters. Yep, that's all of them. I don't even wear glasses. <laughs> Alright guys, that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for watching and as always, my Discord link is in the description. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya. And that's about all there is to the game, um, with the exception of the tentacle that looks a lot like a dick. So if you ever want to see an octopus dick, 